You are good. Very good. All right. Well, let me um, let me do kind of the intro. I'll then flip you around, and we're we're good to go. All right. Sorry, guys. We um, it's our first Zoom session of the year, and we just have to uh, get everything. I'm sorry about that. Hold on. Do this. Sorry, 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 Dave. I know. All right, is everybody here? You look like y'all are here. So now, now. Uh, what grade is this? Seniors? All seniors. All seniors. Yes. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's right our days. So um what you will do is make sure you have your yellow sheet set out. Um, and then uh, I'll get you uh contact info as, as we move on here. Uh, so probably what I would we'll do is just give him a chance to share a little bit, and then um, we'll ask you questions. So okay. Well, let's do this here. Thank you, Dave, for taking uh, time to speak to us. I, I know the kids are looking forward to hearing from you. So let me spin you around, and there you go. Everybody, say hi to Dave. Hello. Okay. Uh, thank you for for sharing with us there. Now that we're we're up and running here, um, so let's do this. Um, I'll give you a chance just to introduce yourself, and then why don't you take it away, and and then we'll open it up for some questions. Sure. So I'm doing three classes today, and if we combine them all into one class, we barely have enough time to scratch the surface. So I'm gonna. Try not to give you too much information. I'm just going to give you enough information to where you'll start questioning things. And the question is, do you want to believe or do you want to know? You guys believe a lot of things. If I told you I live in Connecticut, you can believe it, but it would take some time and effort for you to know it. <clears throat> so belief is, is the lazy man's knowing because belief takes no effort. You read something in a book, you believe it, you write it on a test, you confirm that you believe it, you get an A and then you move on. Doesn't mean that it's true. It just means that the person that learned that taught you the same thing that they learned. But where did that information come from? The question you have to ask is, we've all been told that the earth is a globe. It's obvious it's a globe because we've been programmed before we could even talk. Sesame Street had uh, you know, astronauts on it and globes. Everything is globe program programming. You cannot watch a movie without seeing a globe in it. Um, there's globes everywhere. The question is, if something doesn't curve, then it's what? Flat. If something doesn't move, then it's stationary. All observations to prove Earth curvature and motions have proven the opposite. But they'll never teach you that in regular school. You're lucky enough to have a teacher here that's willing to let you hear some other ideas so you can think for yourself. Because school, on, for the most part, Maybe not this class, but school, for the most part, teaches you what to think, not how to think. They teach you to memorize and regurgitate. I can give you a book of nonsense, tell you to memorize it. You can memorize it, get an A on the test. Doesn't mean any of it's true, right? So you have to actually take the time and effort. But if you want to be rich, I'm going to give you the trick to be rich. Invent something that makes people lazier because people don't want to do the work. People just want a lazy way to do stuff. You know, you want a um, lazy way to cook well to, to feed your family just go out and get fast food you don't have to shop you don't have to cook you don't have to clean right you want to go even lazier than that doordash they'll deliver the fast food to your door so you don't even have to get off the couch right so people tend to be lazy but when you see that this world is more than they're presenting to you you might be inspired to go out and actually do some work take the time and effort everything i tell you today i don't want you to believe any of it i want you to verify all of it but the question is, are you going to take the time to verify it? Because you guys are teenagers. you got plenty to do. you got to socialize, right? When you leave school, the last thing you're thinking about is school, right? So you want to just uh, take care of your lives. So here's the question. Um, and and David, Dave gave me some, uh, some, some questions, some general questions you guys have. There's so much more I want to get into. Planets, ice wall, 
um, and, uh, and, and Antarctica. And uh, so let's just start with planets. But before we do that, this is a top-down look at the Earth. Here's Australia, here's South America. South America is here, um, Africa, United States, right? The Earth is a clock. The sky is a clock. That wherever the sun is, it's noon. So as the sun comes around, it's noon right along this line, right? That's, that goes around once a day. That's the hour hand. It'll lap the moon once every 28 days. So the moon keeps track of the weeks and the months. The sun keeps track of the hours and the days. And if I turn on the stars, the stars will actually lap the sun once a year. So 365 times around, and the sun will slowly lose, fall backwards through each zodiac. And that's how each month basically has its own zodiac until a year happens and it, it catches back up. So when you start looking into how that works in a heliocentric system, which is the globe system, right? None of it makes any sense. Let's just go over some basics before we go over to planets. Um, so here's, a, here's just a look. Um, you guys have taken science, you're seniors. You should know that water needs containment. If you had a bathtub and one side of the bathtub was miss missing, you don't have containment for the water. Take a water bottle that's half full, and no matter where you turn it, the water will always lay level. The water will be level no matter what angle you turn the bottle at. Water relentlessly seeks the ultimate base level, and when at rest, lies flat. Any large body of water lies flat. The oceans lie flat. Lakes lie flat. Lakes freeze flat, right? So. The containment is the shoreline of our world oceans. Think of our all the world's oceans as a, a giant lake, okay? So the, all the world's oceans are a giant lake, right? And so that land needs to be higher than the water. Guess what the highest continent, a.k.a., you know, quotation marks, continent is? Antarctica. This is the average elevation of all of the continents, and this is the average elevation of Antarctica. Antarctica is the shoreline of our world, just like a lake has a shoreline. So when people say, well, what happens if you go to the edge of flat earth? Don't you fall off? What happens when you go to the edge of a lake? Do you fall off? No, you get to the land. And guess what? Antarctica is off limits to all independent uh, exploration. This is a film of the shoreline of Antarctica. This is like 200 feet high. This isn't a wall. It's the shoreline. They call it the ice wall, but the Game of Thrones makes you think that it's a wall. It's not a wall. It's just a shoreline that contains our world oceans. Without containment, you can't have water. Um, so let's. I want to go. I want to go over to planets because that's the first thing I want to talk about. So we're going to jump to that, and then we'll come back, and I'll make most of this at least more than half um, up for questions. So planets. Right. This just came out last night. Right. Every day there's new articles. NASA discovers this. NASA discovers that. Right. And you have to ask yourself, what proof do you have that the Earth is a globe? And let me tell you something. It all comes from NASA and the related space agency. I'm going to show you if we have time that NASA is lying to you completely and totally. Um, they're faking space. They're faking the International Space Station. They're faking everything. And once you catch them faking one thing, let alone 100 things or 1,000 things, you have to discredit everything else they tell you. So planet nine on the horizon, scientists believe new observatory could soon spot a new member of our solar system, right? That's pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool. So let me just move this. Um, so the question you have to ask yourself uh, here, uh, this is another thing that's called um, LIGO, where they measured gravitational waves from more than a billion light years away. Of course, they only show you an animation of what they observe. So I'm, I want you to, I want you to think about these numbers. It's going to blow your mind because you've never dealt with large numbers, even in your most advanced math class, right? So more than a billion light years, the distance light travels in a year, it travels 1186,000 miles a second times the number of seconds in a billion years. That's how far away they're seeing a black hole that doesn't emit light. But meanwhile, we're having difficulty seeing a planet in our solar system. Here's Pluto, our farthest planet, 3.7 billion miles away, which is 5.5 light hours. It takes light five and a half hours, allegedly, to get from Pluto to us. And somehow our spaceship, our, our Voyager, snapped this beautiful picture of Pluto 
on its way by. And just coincidentally, NASA is literally childish. Pluto. What else has the name Pluto? Right? It just happens to have this area that's maybe we'll just call that pareidolia, which is seeing things that aren't really there. But it's pretty, pretty interesting that Pluto has the shape of Pluto the dog on it, right? This is a, no, another one from a while ago, not, just for, not that long ago. Astronomers discover a water reservoir floating in space. Now, space is a vacuum. I don't know if you guys have done any physics, but if you put water in a vacuum, it boils. It just completely turns to vapor instantly, right? So you got a reservoir floating in space that is equivalent to 140 trillion times all of the water in the Earth's ocean. So think of all of the water in all of the Earth's oceans. Could you imagine double that? Right? That's just two times. Then double it again. Imagine adding an entire, all of the ocean's waters, adding that amount to the Earth every second for a trillion seconds. Okay? You know how long a trillion seconds is? Does anyone know how long a trillion seconds is? When, someone take a guess. Yell out a number. How long is one trillion seconds? Say again. 64 years. 64 years. Very close. 31,000 years. Okay? So one trillion seconds is 31,000 years. Your mind can't even comprehend that because I don't think the Earth is even that old. Right? 140 trillion. So that's only... One trillion times, right? You had to you'd have to keep adding Earth's oceans for thirty one thousand years times one hundred and forty, right? You can't even conceive of what that number is. So let's get this straight: possible planet of, of Pluto is five and a half light years away. We'll say okay, it's almost double the distance of Pluto, which would just be crazy. We'll make that ten light hours, right? Three point seven billion miles is how far Pluto is. Five point five light years. So we'll say the planet is ten. 10 light hours, we're, we're going to we're say it's farther, it's even farther than they're probably guessing it is, right? And we can't see it yet. But we can see a black hole 1 billion light years away. One light year is 5.8 trillion miles. One light year is 5.8 trillion miles. That's 8.76 trillion light hours versus 10 light hours. And we can see that. So you have to start to understand that NASA is, they're liars. They're, they're lying. They're making up stuff. The problem is people have a lot of pride. NASA, they're going to take us to space and everything. NASA's lying. NASA's here to keep you in a prison. And that prison is the globe prison for your mind. Um, where do we go from here? Um, the, let's go to, um, oh, yeah, well, hold on. Second. So, Let's just look at a couple other uh, things that NASA NASA claim. NASA claim this, right? This is a photo, uh, an image from NASA. They never show you anything. A cotton candy planet. This is from NASA. Right? You guys play with chi with uh, with AI art programs. You think you can create that? Easy, right? Their AI is writing all of their articles, right? Um, this is this is a, a, a an actual video of Saturn in our solar system. Yes, there's something up there. What is it? It's a light. It's named after a god. We don't know what it is, but it's not the distance or the size that they tell us, right? So you can see this. It looks spherical, but if you look up at the lights in your ceiling, they don't dictate the shape of your floor. Um, let's go to... Um, um, Hold on a second. So here is, these are some pictures of Jupiter, right? This is, this is Jupiter. This is NASA says that that is Jupiter, right? Then they say, this is Jupiter, right? These are paintings. NASA will never use the, the term um, photo. They'll say picture and image because they don't want to lie because pictures and images are made up. But our minds want to see what we want to see. If I said, what planet is this? What planet do you guys think that is? Anybody? Nobody? Is it Jupiter? It's actually a meadow with ducks and grass. But our mind wants to see what it wants to see. So that's nothing. I mean, they, they, uh, they do 
crazy stuff. So NASA, they put out pictures all the time, right? Is these pictures from NASA or are these the bottoms of frying pans? These are frying pans, okay? These are literally frying pans, silhouetted, and NASA puts these out as pictures, uh, uh, pictures of, of Earth, uh, I mean, of other planets, right? When we look at stars, now you got to think about this. Stars, they tell us, uh, you know, our North Star, anyone know the name of our North Star? Anybody? Polaris? Polaris is our North Star. If you go out and find it in the sky, wherever it is, it'll always be there. It never moves. It never moves. Day and night, year after year, no matter where you are, Polaris will never move. If you're on the side of your house and you see it right next to the corner of your house, it'll be there every single time. It never moves. Because supposedly we're spinning, it's at our polar, it's along our axis of spin, and it doesn't move. Even though we're going 193 million miles from one side of the sun to the other, we're chasing the sun at a half a million miles an hour, never to return to where we were before, Polaris never moves. They tell us it's 430 light years away. We can prove by doing some comparisons to the distance of the sun and the size of the sun that they tell us that we couldn't see Polaris at a light day away. It would be too small to see. It would be too small to see and its light would be too dim to see, but we can see it with our naked eye. NASA makes up these things. As a matter of fact, they're thinking of changing the distance of Polaris by a hundred light years. Another number that's inconceivable, inconceivable. Um, but they're, they're like, well, we, we could be wrong about the distance. The most important star in the sky they could be wrong about it, right? So the funny thing is when you search for flat earth, you're gonna get propaganda. You can search for my name. Very rarely do you find a good video uh, of me or of anybody, but, the, but Google will feed you propaganda. You could watch a whole bunch of my videos and other real flat earth videos, and then go check your YouTube history, search flat earth. None of them will show up and propaganda videos will show up. There's a, a massive amount of censorship on this topic because the question you're all going to ask at the end of this, well, why does it matter? I still have to go to school on Monday, right? So the truth is, once you understand where you live, who you are, how powerful you are, and what this place is, and that most of the stuff in the news that they're telling you about overpopulation and, and everything else is all a lie to keep you in control, to keep you on their farm. They're farming you. They, this is a, a, a very interesting war for the control of humanity. Let's talk about um, just the, I talked about curvature. So let's talk about curvature for a second. And I want to get to your questions pretty soon. Um, so let's, uh, here. So this is, um, as I said before, large bodies of water rest, lie flat. And when they get cold, they freeze flat. Here's a reservoir or a lake. And um, it's about eight miles long. We had a guy out there at night with the camera, six inches off the ice. And he put these lights out here at eight miles, seven miles, six miles, and five miles. Now, that doesn't sound like far. But according to the globe, which they say has a radius, radius that's a point from the center to the surface, a radius of just under 4,000 miles, this, this one should be, at this elevation, over 30 feet below the curve, over 22 feet below the curve, 15 feet and nine feet below the curve. <clears throat> they should be behind. They should be behind a physical curvature. You can't see my mouth because it's behind a physical curvature, right? You can't zoom in on it because there's a physical curvature. The globe requires a physical horizon. Horizon, interesting word, horizontal horizon zone, horizontal eye zone, not curve eye zone, but all of these somehow pop up and appear to be at eye, at eye level. Now, the globe apologists will be like, oh, they're refracting up. This one's refracting up 30 feet, 22 and 15 and nine, and they all stop at eye level. If they're refracting up, how come they don't go above eye level? Why do they always stop exactly at eye level, right? No curvature, no ball. No curvature, no ball. People say, well, what about, um, you know, the, the, the sun is another interesting one. Let's look at, um, let's look at that real quick. Um, the, where is it? Can't go. Here we go. So here is a shot 
um, in Illusion, France. We're, uh, we're at this viewing spot and we're looking out at the ocean, we're watching the sunset. And there's a mountain out here, 175 miles away. From this elevation, that distance, the top of the mountain, according to globe math, should be more than a half a mile hidden behind that physical curve. And you can't see it, therefore the Earth is a globe. This is the edge of the Earth, right? But twice a year, the sun migrates in between the two tropics. And twice a year, it lines up with the viewer and the mountain. And as it moves away, it starts backlighting the mountain. Now, the sun's light is strong enough to push 175 miles through the soup of the atmosphere. But the light reflecting off the mountain isn't strong enough. But here's the mountain. And right there where the mouse is, that should be over a half a mile below the curve. But there it is. It's right there. Right? And it can't be refracting up. Let's come forward there. Because... The, the, the globe apologists will say, well, the sun has already set. The mountain is already below the curve, but the sun is refracting up. And the mountain that's in the dark is also refracting up and blocking the sun. Right. And I say, cool story, bro. Right. Because that's impossible. But here's the problem. This alone should tell you that either the earth is flat or it's bigger. Right. But it can't be bigger because all orbital mechanics are out the window. If you change the radius of the Earth, you have to change the distance and size of all of the planets and everything, and nothing would work. We have observations that would require the Earth's radius to be over 250,000 miles, when right now they tell us it's less than 4,000. That's an awfully big ball. And if the Earth is that big, I want to know what else is here. Because if it's a thousand times bigger than they tell us, then there might be a thousand times the number of continents. What's going on there? Um, I'm going to get to your questions, but I'm going to talk about Antarctica real quick because you guys asked, uh, you're interested in the ice wall, right? Which, which I touched on a moment ago. And the ice wall is interesting. Now, by the way, <clears throat> to prove the shape of the earth, you do not have to go or speculate beyond where we're allowed to go. No one's allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south latitude un, un, um, unattended, un, unsupervised. If you try to go towards Antarctica, as soon as you pass that 60 degrees south mark, you will be attacked, uh, be stopped by warships um, that will stop you. Airplanes will be turned around. You will not be able to uh, explore Antarctica independently because they don't want you understanding where you live. Um, where is uh, my Antarctica? Hold on a second. There it is. So, so this is uh, this is you know people say you know what about falling off the Earth. This is the shoreline. When they go to the shoreline, this is how they get things up there. I'm just showing you the shoreline here. Um, whenever you look up Antarctica from space, this is what you get. These are all cartoons, right? There are along the edge all of our camps. But what they've done is they've inverted Antarctica. They've taken it and they've wrapped it around a ball, right? They've wrapped it around a ball and brought all the edges together. So if you took this and wrapped it around a ball, all of this white would be scrunched up on the bottom and that would be your Antarctica. Again, they don't want you to see that here. I'll show you an animation of that. So if this was the world and that's Antarctica, on, and we wrapped it around a ball. And they say, this is where you live. This is all there is, but you're not allowed to explore this little white area. Yeah, we'll take you to a little island out here on this tip, and we'll take, and that's about it, but you're not allowed to. No one's ever gone from Santiago across to Australia. No one's ever done it. No one's ever, ever done that. Don't you think that's a little weird, right? Billions of people have circumnavigated east and west. Um, but zero have done it uh, south. If I take, go on Google Earth on the, on, the, on the web version and I circle a continent, it tells me how many square miles that continent is. Easy. Great. But if I do it around Antarctica, watch what happens. Watch what happens. It inverts. You see this? It, it does, it's measuring. What, what is it measuring? It, it, it literally inverts. Right? And the same thing if I go up to the North Pole, the two places that would tell us where we live, you can't go there physically or virtually. So we go to the North Pole and we circle it and watch what happens. The same thing. It won't measure it. 
but we can measure anywhere else in the world. I can measure uh, Greenland, no problem. But the North Pole and South Pole are virtually and physically off limits, which is, I think, fascinating. All right, and then uh, I'm going to take you to one one speculation um, with some information, some that we found, which is interesting. Now, again. We do not need to speculate what's beyond Antarctica to prove the shape of the Earth or what's above the highest we can go, which I believe is only 72 miles. So this is a ship tracking site. You can track all the cargo ships, uh, all the cargo ships uh, in the world. And we found some ships that were way inside Antarctica, 730 miles in. At that distance, they're 1.9 miles higher than the ocean, which is like, how does a ship get in there? And we found another one 905 miles in, which is 2.37 miles higher than the ocean. How does an active ship get in the middle of Antarctica, right? But if we look here, there, um, this is a map that was found in a Buddhist temple, 10 centuries old. It was published in Hawaii in 1910 in a newspaper. And it shows all these continents out here. Now, remember when we wrapped it around a ball, right? So what if they were actually going out here? That would show them in the middle of Antarctica. So these are more continents out here. America, China gave the gay out. Oh, so going, going, jumping forward, jumping back a little bit, the, that ship, we looked up the information on the ship, and it was registered very little information to a little sandbar in the middle of the ocean called Karabati or Karabas, it's pronounced, right? I had to put a pin on it because it's so small you can't see it. And they say it's our most important trade route, right? There's only a few people that live there. It's very low numbers. And, uh, and they have all of these ships that go there. What are they, what are, what is going on there? And if, you know, if we look at, um, at the ships that actually go there, all of them, don't have their destinations listed. They have it as either Christmas Island, which is a debate about what that means, and unknown. But you click on any other ship in the ocean, it'll tell you where it's going, where it's been, how long it's at sea. But these are, these are very secretive ships. Maybe they're going to the outer lands, getting technology, tuna fish. Who knows what they're trading, right? Who knows what's going on? Maybe that's where we're getting our computer chips from because the people in the computer chip factories that we've spoken to, they don't know where they're coming from. So... I can go on and on, but we only have 15 minutes left, I think, or 20 minutes, 19 minutes. So let's go to questions so I can answer some of your questions. Ben, start us off. You started your whole presentation with the government's lying and we should question all the stuff that we're being taught. Why should we trust you any more than we trust our government? Well, if you listen to me, I said, don't trust anything I said. I'm just pointing to some doors. I want you to go verify it yourself. You can do all the measurements yourself, right? If you look at, you know, NASA, um, the stuff that they, they pull off and you actually see uh, from their live feeds, not mine, um, that, they're, that they're lying about, um, you know, they're faking space. That is, uh, that is re it's crazy. I mean, they're, they're saying, uh, you know, this galaxy exists. This is an animation of water in space. You know, how do you have water in space? How do you have a vacuum adjacent to a high pressure of the earth? Gas needs containment. How do we have high pressure next to a vacuum of space? And you say gravity holds it on, but I can drink through a straw. I can suck air up from a straw with a low pressure, you know, the weak, weak, weak low pressure of my mouth and lungs, and I could, I could defy gravity, but the vacuum of space? You ever see what happens when they suck all the air out of a, a solid steel train uh, car, you know, um, a tank? It, it collapses, right? And the opposite happens if you, if you fill it with air and put it in a vacuum, it explodes, right? So... We live in a, 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 a physically impossible uh, world, a spinning ball, corkscrewing through space, traveling for billions of years in, in all different directions, and, uh, and never once does, um, does, do any, does anything change. If we look at, um, if we look at, hold on a second, here, this is where they tell us we live, right? We're, we're oops, that's not it. Um, we're spinning, we're spinning, around the earth at 66,600 miles an hour. We're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour, chasing, this is NASA. This is what they tell us. We're chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour, traveling four and a half billion miles a year, never to return to where we were before. All the stars in our galaxy are doing the same thing, but never once do two stars change positions due to parallax. 
Never once do any two stars ever change position in all of history. They're lying. You can prove that you can't see a star at the size they claim, at the distances they claim, right? If our sun was right over our head, a mile over our head, it would fill the whole sky. Move it 93 million miles away, it's now the size of a coin held at arm's length, just like we see it. Double the distance, it's a quarter of the size. Double again, it's like a pencil eraser. Double again, it's like a star. That's one light hour. Make it 24 times farther, you could not see it, right? Then you take Polaris, they say it's 46 times farther than the sun. So if we made Polaris 46 light days away, not even two months, you couldn't see it. But they tell us it's 430 light years away, right? These are things that you don't think through because they never taught you how to think in large numbers. Next. Uh, Ms. Regan. Okay. So if the edge of the flat Earth, it's, it's like surrounded by a border of ice, and the sun is rotating around the flat Earth, then why is the coldest point like a border if that's what the sun is hitting? Right. So, so I think I can answer that. Um, so let's go here. Hold on a second. Um, all right. So here we have, let me just turn off the stars, right? So the sun goes around. You see this line here. This line is called the Tropic of Capricorn. And on December 21st, the sun migrates all the way out to this line. So the southern continents, Australia, South Africa, South America have their summer. And then when it goes all the way in to June, let's make it go to June. Where are we at? Uh, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. So in June, the sun goes all the way in here, and it's closer to the inner northern latitude. So it's closer to us, right? So the sun, you know, gets the, the north is having their summer, and the south is having their winter. Now, the sun is farther away from what they call Antarctica. So that's why it's the coldest uh, temperatures in the world. In reality, you know, Antarctica should have equivalent life and temperatures that and that the north has if we were a ball there'd be symmetry um but at at 60 degrees south nothing grows there's no plants there's nothing but at 85 degrees north significantly farther north there's plants animals people there's all sorts of stuff right so none of that makes any sense right let me just really quickly uh, relating to that is the seasons let me just give you a, a better um, view of that. So here, here we have, let's say two of us are outside and it's freezing and um, somebody's holding a heat lamp directly over you, right? So let's pretend that's our sun. And I say, where's your sun? And you point it up, it's straight up, right? So you point up and that's your summer sun, right? And I, and I, and I say, well, where do I see the sun? Well, I see it there, like 45 degrees. Uh, it's very much lower on my horizon. I'm cold, you're warm because it's closer. Then over the next six months, the sun moves over without getting any lower. It's higher in the sky for me. It's lower in the sky for you. I'm warm. You're cold. My summer, your winter. Right? The whole idea of the tilted earth causing the seasons makes no sense whatsoever. Because if that was true, in June here in Connecticut, when the sun is rising, it should be ice cold. Because it's as low as it could possibly be on the horizon at sunrise. And it's 3 million miles farther in the heliocentric model than it is during our winter. So those two things together should make it freezing cold. But in June, I could feel the heat. I can lay down and get a suntan. All right, next. Jack, you have a question. Obviously, you believe that certain branches of science, such as astrophysics, are like too far gone and our understandings of them are just completely wrong. Do you believe that there's any types of science that is we have a good understanding of what it actually is and we can use it to progress ourselves. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, biology, you know, doctors uh, that, that use, um, you know, like uh, uh, orthopedic doctors. Awesome. I get run over by a truck. I want to see an orthopedic doctor. If I get cancer, I'm not going to see an allopathic doctor because there are cures for cancer out there that are that, you know, that insurance and doctors won't even discuss. So um, I'm not into you know allopathic, chemical-based medicine, all based on uh, petroleum products, which is nonsense. I mean, if you look into the history of medicine uh, in the early 1900s, there was all types of medicines out there. But then the Rockefellers came in and defunded all of them, funded all of the universities to go into the chemical medicine. And, uh, and they made that the, the, 
the way it is. If you go, if you have a certain type of cancer and there's a natural cure for it that 90 cures 99% of the people, but you go to a regular doctor that uh, in the DSM, which is the, what, what says, yeah, you have this cancer, here's the protocol. They have to give you that protocol, even if it kills 99% of the people, that's what they have to give you. Even if they know about the one that cures 99%, they're not allowed to tell you about it. That's messed up. So that I don't believe in. Um, there's, you know, we flat earthers, they say, oh, flat earthers are science deniers. No, no, we love science. We hate pseudoscience, right? The radius of the earth, how is that? that how is that? Um, how do we come up with that? How do we find the the center of the earth? How do we know what's underneath? Um, how do we know what the you know what's inside the earth? Uh, you know they they show us this meme everywhere, right? We couldn't, we can't get below eight miles. Eight miles is like halfway through the skin of this apple, and we were wrong every step of the way when we were guessing what we we're going to hit next. Then they hit an impenetrable barrier, but somehow they know the next four thousand miles to the center. This is pseudoscience. We love science. Next. Next question. Yeah. Okay. Then what then, do you think is inside the earth? You know, I don't know. You know, what's below the earth? Nobody knows. Nobody knows on the globe or the flat. Um, we don't know. You know, the earth is stationary. It is measurably level. It measures level. You know, one of the questions you guys are going to come up with later, if you don't come up with it now, is, well, how come we can't see Polaris, our North Star, from the south? Well, Stand under a light, and so you can measure the angle 90 degrees straight up. So you're, and we'll call that light the North Star. So in that room, under the light, 90 degrees. If you start moving away, that light's going to start getting lower and lower, and you can measure your angle. Hey, I'm 45 degrees south of that light as the, on the other side of the room. Now, all they did is they took perspective and they wrapped it around a ball. They're like, oh, that's because you're going over a ball. No, it's just because you're getting farther from the light. And as you go farther and farther, that light will go into the horizon. And it'll merge into the horizon. Okay. Um, before, just because we're going to run out, the bell's going to run out. I got, I got like 10 minutes left. But um, on my website, flatearthdave.com, if you scroll way down, you'll see a big picture of me. And it says crash course. Turn off Netflix for a week and watch those videos. Watch those videos. Those are being hidden from you. And uh, if you watch the first three videos, you'll watch all of them because you'll be hooked. Once you see this, you can't unsee it. The problem is it's easier just to read, memorize, regurgitate, get your grade, and then go play with your friends. That's easier. That's what most people want to do, right? But if you want to find out the truth of this world and get ahead, um, you know, th this world is uh, not what you think it is, and uh, you are way more powerful than you than you believe. And the thing is, you ever hear of Stockholm Syndrome? They've indoctrinated people so much that they literally fight to um, to protect their captors, right? On my this is my app. It's called the Flat Earth Sun Moon and Zodiac Clock app. I just want to show you Flat Earth. If there was if the Earth was a globe, there would be no flat Earthers. Here are the flat Earthers that have my app right here, just in the United States, right? These are people that are looking into flat earth, researching it, doing experiments, and all of them are finding unequivocally, unequivocally, there is no curvature, there is no motion, right? So you have to start looking, but you'll never find it by Google searching or not looking. Go ahead, next. Yeah, Olivia. Um, I'm, I'm just a little confused on that. So on that kind of phone picture, would you say that's an accurate graph of flat Earth? First of all, on the picture, you're just like... Well, th this is showing the what we call the azimuthal equidistant map, which is the, the best map that we have. It is the map that is used for navigation. Um, it, it, you know, the, the globe map doesn't work physically. Here, th let me... The, the, I'm going to let you finish your question, but let me, let me answer it this way. So this is, uh, this is the map. It was in all encyclopedias and all school rooms. It was everywhere until 1959, I think, where they removed it. They took it out of everything, right? So Australia, South America, this is how navigation's done, right? If we look at, uh, if we look at flight routes, right, southern flight routes, um, it'll, it'll blow your mind what, what they do. If you think about it, here is, here is um, you know, they, they talk about the great circle route going from um, – from California to the UK, 
and it, it does the great circle route. It goes up here, it touches Green, South America, I mean, uh, Greenland and down. But if you look at it on a flat earth map, it touches a straight line. It does all of the same, the same things, right? And if you think about it in the Southern hemisphere, why wouldn't somebody go from here to Johannesburg, Johannesburg over to Brisbane by just cutting across here? They go all the way up Doha and down, but on a flat earth map, it's a straight line. It's a straight line. And when you, when you start seeing that here on a globe, New Zealand to Argentina, this is a great circle route. It goes right here, just right by Antarctica. You're not going over Antarctica, so you're not breaking any treaties. Why doesn't it go there, right? And the question is, you know, how does it go? It goes all the way up to San Francisco, <laughs> then it goes over to Texas, and then it goes all the way back down to Argentina. Does that make any sense? Let's look at it on a flat earth map, ready? New Zealand, San Francisco, Houston, Texas, Argentina, a straight line. Is that a coincidence? Is that a conspiracy theory? Take a look. This is what it does on a globe. That's what it requires. You can't go from here to here, which is shorter than from here to here, but it goes all the way up and over. But on a flat earth, it's a straight line. And there's been emergency landings that cause major problems because they have to land in places where they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have a, they shouldn't have landed. They sh shouldn't have needed to land. They shouldn't have been able to land because they weren't there on a, on a flat earth map. Um, for example, here's one. Um, a flight from Hong Kong was all going to the UK. 12-hour flight here. Four hours into the flight, right about here, a mother traveling with her little kids and husband dies dead in her seat. They should just land right away. Land, 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 land. There's all tons of airports along here. They didn't land for 12 hours, and they finally stopped in Germany. Why? Right? Because if you look at the route on a flat earth map, they were over Russia. And if they landed in Russia, two things would have happened. Russia might have been very helpful, and that could spark world peace. That's a whole other topic. And or people would, like me would say, why would you stop in Russia? Look, flat earth map. So they couldn't admit that they were over Russia. So they had to fly 12 more hours to Frankfurt before they could land. Because that's the route that the plane takes. There's a thousand examples of this. A thousand Dad. Um, how do you explain if I were to go from like South America to Australia, like southerly over the ice wall around the globe? How would you explain yeah, that? Yeah, from South America over to Australia. I would explain it that the earth is a globe, but nobody has ever done it. Now, there is a flight from South America to Australia, which is really far. But the flight that does it, the airplane that does it, it's flown by only one of seven military pilots. The plane itself is a special Boeing Dreamliner that has seven layers of heat-resistant paint. It flies at over 45, 50,000 feet where there's 350-mile-an-hour tailwinds. So it goes faster. It's in a tailwind, and the numbers make perfect sense. We actually had somebody on the plane that did um, – that that measure that was uh taking compass readings and the compass readings actually showed that he went this route he should have just gone south and then a little bit northwest to get to australia if it was a ball but he went north 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 west southwest south and that 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 would be this route right here again we don't have time to go into all that on this app, there's a frequently asked questions button. I'm giving the app is three dollars. Anybody that has Android that e emails me says, "Hey, I was in the class. I'll give you a free download for the app, and you can check out the frequently asked questions. You can check out all the stuff, um, and then take the time research, and all of your questions are answered. Right? All of the questions you have, like, hey, why would they lie? Why? Why would they lie? Right there. Why would they lie? Or you know, hey, what about uh, where? Where does the sun go? Right there. Right. Or uh, what about ships over the horizon? Um, and then up come all of these videos. Whoops. We'll go back to that. Um, all, all the videos that YouTube is hiding from you. Um, let me, let me uh, ask, oh, you got a few minutes left here, but I do want to ask this question here. And in the past, you said you're not a conspiracy theorist. You're a conspiracy realist. Um, Analyst. And, and sorry, conspiracy analyst. Could, could you elaborate on, on what you mean by that? 
Well, people say they don't believe in conspiracies. There's a conspiracy in your house. Anytime two or more people get together to benefit themselves, that's a conspiracy. Anytime people benefit together. So if you believe that politicians are all here for your good, you're very, very naive because they're all out to you know benefit each other and themselves. So there's lots of conspiracies. There's lots of truth. The problem is there's so many, they're so big that people just refuse to be it. All of you guys are good kids. You're all good, right? You're all born pure. Right. But when you realize how much evil is in this world, you don't want to face it. There's a lot of evil. The good news is you don't have to accept any of it. You are here with God given free will and nobody can take it away from you unless you willingly give it to them. So there's a lot to learn by unplugging from the heliocentric matrix because that's a prison for your mind. When did, um, and, and David, when did you become aware? When did you realize that there was a, a the flat earth was reality? Yeah, I, I, uh, I was the first, the first thing uh, I was looking into is what is money? I was like, well, I don't understand what money is. And then I watched a show called Money Masters. I highly recommend you guys watch that. And I realized that money's fake. Money is just a made up construct and it's owned by a private bank. The Federal Reserve is not even a government agency. It's owned privately and they make the money and lend it to the United States at interest, which is crazy. Then I started looking into some other deceptions and there's major deceptions. All of the things that scare you on the news, most of them, if not all of them, are deceptions. And uh, when I started looking into that, my, the third year, uh, I was doing a podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. People started sending me flat earth stuff, and I just banned them. I said, you're too stupid to watch our podcast, right? Um, because the flat earth, that's ridiculous. But then finally, I was forced to look. And I looked with a closed mind. I looked trying to debunk flat earth, trying to prove the globe. And here I am, 10 years later, talking to you guys. Uh, they call me Flat Earth Dave. And um, the thing is, when you try to follow, learn the heliocentric system, which is the globe system, you short circuit. You're like, I don't understand that. I'm not smart enough. I don't have a degree. And you think that you're stupid. You're not stupid. It's stupid. Okay. That's why you can't figure it out. All right. You're not stupid. You're smart. You're divine. You have incredible powers. And the schooling system, not your teacher here, this guy's trying to give you an ability to think for yourselves, is trying to weed that out of you. It's trying to literally. Um, turn you into a corporate slave. David, what I say. Else about the ring here, but we want to thank you for taking time out to sign to us. All right, you guys can email me at flat earth Dave, the you know, Dave at flat earth Dave.com if you want, uh, want the app for free, if you want to look further, or just go to my website, flat earth Dave.com and go down to the crash course, watch those videos. See ya. That went very well. Lots of good questions. Kids were very interested. Okay, we have a question here from a student. Yeah, bring it on. Hi, my name is Arik. Um, I just had one little question about that little world clock you have right behind you. Yeah. I was just confused on how like the sun creates like a little semicircle and how there's a straight line going completely across. Yeah. When so, like, let, let me, let me answer that. But so you have time. So right now, if you look at the sun, it's over the, it's over, you know, I can even stop this. Um, it's over the equator, which is the red line. And so mm -hmm. if the, we, we believe that there's some sort of dome around us. So the light is reflecting off the dome and creating a line, but watch, I'm going to change it from month to month and watch what happens. Right. And this is according to time and date. So right now we're in uh, the, the, the equinox month, September, October, right? November. Look at the, it's going out towards the wall now. So it's wrapping around November, December, January, February. I mean, no, we're in March, sorry, March. So there's the equinox month again, April, May, and June, right? Do you, have, do you have 30 do you have 60 seconds i'll show you i'll show you something i can, that blow your I mind. can ask mr for a pass in my next class okay so let, it's, let, it's let not me, very far off. yeah let me let me just show you show you this real quick so it's digital design it's this is yeah yeah so so here is here is the the gleason's map right um every year a couple couple on certain days of the year the the earth is lit up this is from the weather channel more than half, right? If you have a ball and a light, 
can only light up half of it, but more of it's lit up, which is impossible. Impossible. So let's look, look at, look at, look at this, right? So this is here, all right? So, so this is um, August 13th. August 13th, we have all of this is in daylight, right? So South America, right? If you look at that on a ball, it doesn't make any sense. So here is um, where the sun was. We're going to put our, our light there and we're going to lift it up. And there it is. The same areas are lit. The only thing not lit is Australia and these islands over here, right? And if we try to look at that on a ball, right? Now, the, um, this is hard to show you. Um, and we, we try to light up the same area. So we got Australia. We'll put Australia right in the dark, right? Just like it was with that light. And then we go around to the other side and look, all of South America is in the dark, right? The ball says South America must be in the dark. So if we, if we move it, so we'll go back and we'll say, okay, South America is in the light. So let's move it. We'll put South America in the light, just like it was there. Like that light was showing. And we'll go to the other side and you'll see that all of Europe, all of Russia, all of that is in the dark and it should be in the light. It should be in the light. And, the, and so if we look at it here, it only works on a flat earth. It only works on a flat earth. This is the circle here. And this is what we see. Observational reality matches the flat earth map. I just want, I just want to say thank you very much. All right. I encourage you watch those videos on my website. Watch that. Watch that. I will. All right.